WWE is on the air. Welcome to Women's Extreme Wrestling. My name is Joe Dombrowski. As uh, we formally welcome you to the Booty Ambush, and for the next hour, we're going to take a look at some incredible young female athletes doing what they do best in the course of professional wrestling. As we take a look at the very first athlete through the curtain. She is Savannah Stone, and you can see a very determined look on her face. Someone who has branched out throughout the Midwest and even been a two-time champion in Zero One USA. So uh, certainly, uh, both domestically, internationally, uh, a lot of people have their eyes on this St. Louis native as she gets set for one-on-one -on -one competition to kick us off here in this installment of Women's Extreme Wrestling. I'm familiar with this opposition. She refers to herself as the Exalted One. Her name is London Ali. And uh, many of you fans may have seen her in her travels. I, I believe that she, uh, she's relocated uh, formerly from my neck of the woods in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Now down in Texas, I believe she's training under Booker T. Uh, under the name of Promise Braxton. So London Ali has... Uh, Make great in road for herself. Introducing first from St. Louis, Missouri, she is the leader of Stone Nation and one half of the Golden Unit. She is Savannah Stone! And her opponent, hailing from Harlem, New York, she is the exalted one, London Ali! Well, she'd be great to kick us off. Two uh, very intense athletes, very disciplined athletes. You ready? Ready. Hands high and tight off the German suplex. That was a very gruesome landing. This has got to be it. Hook in the leg, and London Ali finds a way to get out. Very impressed by the resolve of London Ali and the fact that uh, she's still in this thing. She's still fighting. She's still uh, moving yeah. forward. Yeah. One, two, three. And you know, the stone is almost daring London Ali to, to hit her with her best shot. Yeah, uh, stone, stone wants to test that medal of London Ali. See what, what she brings to the table here. Prawn hold. Ali... With uh, what looked to be a uh, half an armbar takedown, half a DDT. Is this enough a near fall? The counts are getting longer here. Ali is, has been able to manipulate her, her body, use her agility to counteract the aggressiveness Savannah Stone has displayed. But speaking of aggressiveness, London Ali showing that right now. Stone sent... Uh, Multiple times into the turnbuckle after the offensive barrage. Ali now looking to take a chance. And stone the elbow. Now boot right, uh, right around the solar plexus that, huh? it looked like. What about that? That put the brakes on for London. Even uh, if only for a few moments. May have been all so that uh, huh? Savannah Stone needed. Charging clothesline. You see that Stone is... Making the most of this opportunity. Oh, what a rib-crunching spear. And yeah, that'll do it. Savannah Stone picks up a win over London Ali. You can see why Stone is highly touted as you see her kind of uh, metaphorically kick the dirt on London Ali, a form of disrespect. The Hurricane Rana but came back up and tried to follow through on that. Walked right into the drop kick. And you see Stone as if to say, what do you got now? Continuing to apply the pressure, but Ali turns things around and sends Stone tumbling to the outside. 
I think Stone has tried to get in the head of Ali in the early going, and Ali has shown that uh, she's picking her spots here. Now following Stone to the outside, check this out. Up the ring apron into the Hurricane Rock, nicely done. I appreciate that. That was uh, impressive athleticism as Stone thrown back in, and Stone immediately in motion here. London Ali doesn't see her till it's too late, but the, the Tope Suicida connects and uh, sends London Ali vaulting back into the front row. Ali back in, and uh, Stone on top for the cover, but not able to put her away. I like how both athletes have Look to change the pace and change direction at a, uh, a pretty rapid nature. I spoke earlier about what is an evenly matched uh, altercation this looks to be, and they're not letting me down. Stone the buckle bomb. Sends Ali spine first into those uh, thinly padded steel bolts that uh, help hold these ropes and this ring together. And looking up, pull Ali from the corner, but Ali grabbed on, got that Hurricane Rana that time. The clothesline follow through, nicely done. Ali has been explosive here. When she's had the opportunity, hooks the leg, but barely a count of one. Stone has been uh, in charge of much of this contest. So uh, could be a bit still before we're able to see her put away. Textbook suplex nicely done. Roll over into the cover, but again, only a count of one. Stone is uh, still very young to the game. I think she only debuted over the past uh, two or three years, but mark of a veteran, if you ask me, as far as her ability to, to get off of her back and her shoulders in a quick amount of time to not get caught in a pinning predicament for a second or two too long and, and risk demise as Ali Able to roll through with that side headlock. Stone was looking to counter. Ali using that momentum to her advantage and uh, nicely done there. A little bit of a modified Blue Thunder takedown into a near fall. Stone slides that shoulder up once more. And you can hear these fans as London Ali, if they, these fans have not seen her before, they're certainly. Uh, Getting an up-close introduction of what London Ali is all about. And now London Ali is about taking a chance. <laughs> Went for a, a splash, maybe a knee drop, but nobody was there. And Stone with a thrust kick caught her flush. Ali dazed on her feet and lands high and tight. Off the German suplex, that was a very gruesome landing. This has got to be it. Hooking the leg, and London Ali finds a way to get out. Very impressed by the resolve of London Ali and the fact that uh, she's still in this thing. She's still fighting. She's still uh, moving forward. And you notice know, Stone is almost daring. London Ali to, to hit her with her best shot. Stone, Stone wants to test that medal of London Ali, see what, what she brings to the table here. Prawn hold, Ali with uh, what looked to be a half an arm bar, take that half a DDT, is this enough in here fall? The counts are getting longer here. Ali is has been able to manipulate her, her body, use her agility to counteract the aggressiveness Savannah Stone has displayed. But speaking of aggressiveness, London Ali showing that right now. Stone sent uh, multiple times into the turnbuckle after the offensive barrage. Ali now looking to take a chance. And stone the elbow. And a boot right uh, right around the solar plexus, it looked like. That put the brakes on for London, even uh, if only for a few moments. May have been all that uh, Savannah Stone needed. 
charging clothesline. You see that Stone is making the most of this opportunity. Oh, what a grip crunching spear. One, two, three. And yeah, that'll do it. Savannah Stone picks up a win over London Ali. Why Stone is highly touted as you see her kind of uh, metaphorically kick the dirt on London Ali, a form of disrespect. Savannah Stone with uh, a primal scream, a lot of intensity, a lot of aggression, and it led to a victory. All right, everybody, our next match was supposed to be Brittany Blake versus Violet Lee. Unfortunately, Violet Lee could not make it tonight. I'm sorry. Go down here. Introducing first from the backwoods of Pennsylvania, she is the red neck chick, Izzy McCoy. <laughs> and her opponent, hailing from the Elysium, she is the answer to your prayers. Well, yeehaw, we're underway. It's McCoy and Nix. Nice to see a shake of the hand to show you the respect. Often overlooked in this line of work, but uh, two competitors through and through. Now that the bell is rung, you know they're not going to hold anything back, per se. But the mutual respect still exists, at least for now. Nix controls early, McCoy the reversal. Of course, in many of these matches, you'll see a feeling out process in the early going. Many of these athletes haven't met one another before. Many of them come from different places geographically and certainly have studied under different trainers, different mentors, different seminars. You gotta feel your opponent out to see what they bring to the table, how well versed they are in a particular style, and uh, perhaps what they'll go for, what their pain threshold is, what their strategy will be. And it's, it truly is uh, what many would call the human game of chess, as both athletes end in a standoff. The tie-up again it is Nix with uh, the advantage. McCoy reversing. Go behind. Standing side switch, nicely done. We're seeing great technique by these athletes. Fundamentals. 
as far as how they approach the game. Nick's creates some distance. Duck to the swing, back elbow connects. And on top, and only a count of one on that exchange. Certainly, uh, we talked about the intelligence of getting off your back quickly. You don't want to put yourself in a disadvantageous situation. Close line follow through by Nix as uh, McCoy tastes the buckle and a second time. Nix follows through again. And Nix has been on the offensive. The punt kick, is this enough? No. And McCoy trying to regain her bearings. Nix trying to Nix that, if you'll excuse an obvious pun, by applying the reverse chin lock. Izzy looks to battle free, but as soon as Nix can feel that tide swinging, she shuts McCoy back down. Oh, went to charge in once more, but uh, Izzy was ready for it this time, and Izzy charging to the other side. This is unorthodox, but right now it's effective. Corner splash, and Izzy getting riled up here. Handspring into the corner, nowhere for Nick to go. And then the Bulldog face plant, look at the leg. Count of two, says the official. And just like that, uh, Ariella Nix may have to rethink her strategy. And what, quick inside cradle there. But only one, as, as soon as I begin to, to call it, we're onto the side slam. Izzy gets, I believe, two that time. Pace is quickening here as uh, both athletes look to catch the other off guard. Crowd is rocking. They love their women's wrestling. We thank them for joining us. We thank you guys for joining us at home. And uh, no thanks from Nix to McCoy, who met her in the corner with a boot. And now, check this out, neckbreaker. There's a rude awakening for you. There's a three count. I don't think Izzy McCoy was uh, hoping her prayers would be answered with a loss here in this particular installment. But Nick's made sure that happened, and I dig it. We still have the mutual respect that we saw at the outset of this matchup. Two great competitors came out here to test one another. It's what we got. Only one could stand tall as the victor, and, well, on this particular outing, that victor was the answer to the prayers of Ariella Nix. Looking to have a bright future here in the months ahead on WWE, And still a lot more to come. We're just getting started. Ladies and gentlemen. Introducing first from Bita Ho, New York, the most ruthless female.
Delmi Exo and uh, Casey Flynn Catal are going to hope to practice safe hex here on this broadcast because their opponents are, um, let's say, a little bit out there. And let's say uh, they have a penchant for causing pain. Ravana Zinn 
and Nina Monet. I'm uh, most familiar with Delmi Exo, and by the way, if you haven't figured it out yet, this is this is a tag team contest. Well, you can see the. Um, conflicting personalities of both these athletes as EXO ties up oh good grief that is Ravana Zinn who has wasted no time exerting her aggression seen Delmi EXO bit of a tag team specialist of sorts number of incarnations throughout the independent scene to take her opponent over with a uh, arm dragger too, but gets afforded every time with a series of strikes. Dummy Exo, she's laid back. She wants to be just one of the boys, one of the guys. She's hanging out, having a good time, doing some neck breakers. But uh, very, very talented, very skilled, and doesn't have that in your face intensity, but as a more quiet demeanor and likes to let her actions do the speaking for her and more often than not it plays off well. Tag into uh, Casey Flynn Catal. KFC and uh, we don't have a sponsorship deal so I won't editorialize on my love of uh, fast food at this point but I will we'll talk about my love of double teams within the confines of a five count ending in the double knees in the corner into the lateral press, hook of the leg for two. Delmi and Catal seem to be showing some great tag team synergy. And a tag to Nina Monet. And there goes Nina Monet. Catal over the knees to the back of the head. Right around the neck and the shoulder blades. That'll do some serious damage. Head of steam, the sliding clothesline nicely done, hooks up leg again. Monet, a uh, native of Jonesboro, Arkansas, from what I understand. Catal tags back in EXO. Frequent tags here. Wheelbarrow into a roll through, and EXO winds up on top into the cover. I like that, a double team that led right into the cover. There was no wasted time or motion. And Catal back in. I told you that EXO was a bit of a tag team specialist. Told you she knew what she was doing. And she's, uh, not to discredit Catal here, who's certainly more than carrying uh, her own end of the bargain, but I uh, love the chemistry. And I don't necessarily, easy for me to say, tongue-tied here, because the action is so unpredictable. Don't necessarily like the double team in the way that Zinn and Monet cho chose to utilize it. But it puts Katal in a bad way. Katal trained at the Creative Pro Academy by Brian Myers and Pat Buck. And hopefully they, uh, they taught her how to defend herself against two attackers because she is deep in the wrong part of the ring. Oh, God. That hurt me. Why my ears bleeding? As if uh, the demonic nature of the blood... The face-eating, blood-lusting, demonic, d demoness, or whatever she was introduced as. I'm sure I got that wrong. My apologies to uh, to uh, Ravana Zinn. I don't want her to hurt me. I don't want her to eat my face. There's a suplex. Under the hook of the leg. As if that wasn't enough to throw you off your game. You're going to get screamed at. You're going to get double teamed. Isolated from your tag team partner. Tough day at the office if you are Casey Katah. 
And you see the, the full arm bar. Shades of Ole Anderson by Nina Monet. As uh, you can see the distance between the arm and the rest of the anatomy of the towel, looking to separate that shoulder was Monet. Create a very unpleasant time for a position scissor stomp. And that'll make your ears ring to be sure. And just hear the, the desperations and the pain in the screams of uh, Katal. Once again, just being, uh, being victimized by her two aggressors. Delmi Exo is, is essentially powerless here. All she can do is watch. Twisting splash and is the official the official apparently called a tag at some point or recognized a tag. I don't know if the uh, the team had meant to tag her if it was just an incidental contact in their double team. But uh, regardless, I'll give props to the official for staying on top of that particular piece of business. And I'll give props to Katal with a high kick. She's got an opportunity here. Pace quickens and... Uh, oh, she got dropped. She had an opportunity to get the tag to EXO and instead she hit the rope. She was looking for a knockout blow and, and honestly I think that was a major, major mistake by Casey Flynn Catal. Zinn back in and with the assist of Monet on the outside, shot to EXO, running with the, uh, the variation of a seated senton, Monet with a cannonball. Double team offense here coming at Catal from all sides. And the running, sliding uppercut as well. I'm digging this offense. I'm uh, appreciating the, the rapid fire. Wait, there's a cover here, nearly a count of three. Dummy Exo had to come in for the save. If not, you gotta believe this matchup would have been history. Here, uh, Monet is instructing her tag team partner. Once her held, Monet looking for perhaps a kill shot here. Couldn't find her opponent, instead collision with her partner. Could be a miscue here at all. Katal just books it for Delmi Exo. She realized that if she was in this ring another minute or two, this matchup was likely over and it's Delmi Exo, easily at this point the freshest athlete in the contest, who is unloading. As everybody's looking for bragging rights, everybody's looking for an advantage. Exo got reversed, got the elbow up though. Beautiful jumping neck breaker off the turnbuckle. Will this be enough? No. About a half a count away, if that, as Delmi Exo has completely shifted the tide and the momentum. Katal back in. This could be a mistake. Pump kick. Into the Russian leg sweep on top now. And there's Monet with the interruption. Referee has done a great job of keeping order as best he can until now. Might as well throw his arms up. He's lost control of this one. And Zinn and Monet. Double. Monet just got basically launched into a half a leg drop, half a senton onto both adversaries, and this'll do it, no. Great job by uh, Zinn to realize that EXO was, I believe, still legal. If the referee even still knows. Uranagi takedown. 
all four athletes persist in the ring and uh, tags look to be out the window. It's Texas Tornado rules and oh, there's a springboard cutter by Katal. It may have been all she had left in her system. Double under her overhead suplex by Moneta Katal. The double arm pile driver by EXO. Each athlete looking to come up big with their offense. But still, all four of these athletes continue in the battle. Oh, he strikes. XO is uh, getting the advantage here. At least she's getting more shots in. And wait a minute, for the outside. XO saw Monet was maybe preparing to, I don't know, trip her up, give her a cheap shot. And XO keeps that from happening. What is that, hairspray? What is that? Katal just sprayed something in the face of of uh, Ravana Zen. Exo comes in with a submission. A variation of a dragon sleep with a body scissors. There's the tap out. This thing's over. Ladies and gentlemen, your winners, Delmi Exo and Casey Patal. Delmi Exo, the tag team specialist. Joined by Casey Catal, who, uh, was armed and ready for uh, some shenanigans to go down this particular tag team matchup, but it was the difference maker. Things had completely broken down, lost control, uh, legal athlete be damned, but Exo can tell your winner. of international proportions the sweetest sin violet waste no time it's new york city and moscow russia one-on-one -on -one here on wew and uh you see the aggressiveness of legit layla hirsch Looks to have uh, a combat sports uh, mixed martial arts background, I would say, but wasn't prepared to get tripped up by Violet that time. First looking to battle out of the corner. Violet's done a, a great job with an opening strategy, in my opinion. I think uh, she feels that Hirsch is deadliest on her feet. Perhaps a striking game, a throwing game, but uh, when you're on your back in a defensive position, you can only do so much. And uh, we're seeing that firsthand. Ouch. Hirsch fires back, and uh, there's some of that striking advantage, double handed variation of the chop by the sweetest sin, Violet. Hard spinal tap and now off the road for the drop kick. Now Violet has uh, spent most of this match keeping Layla off her feet. There's another near fall. And Violet's focused on that back and certainly if the back is damaged, it affects your movement, it affects your ability to bend, to stretch. Your leverage, your reach, is the largest part of, of your anatomy, so certainly it behooves you to focus on it, on your opponent, but a nice uh, bicycle knee strike. And 
charging in. You see the intensity and the pacing that Layla Hirsch brings to the table. You can sense this matchup just up its tempo whenever she finds a way to get in some offense. And while once a bit of a reprieve, bits, bits, a bit of distance, but Layla not letting that happen. The uh, heat seeking missile. If you want a second time, look out. And you notice Layla landed hard. There's no protection. There's no padding on this floor. I think Layla collided with one of those ringside chairs as well. Combine that with the damage done to the back so far in this matchup by Violet. And uh, this could have been a turning point. This high-risk maneuver, this attempt by Layla may not have paid off. They close line, and you notice that a two count there as Layla slides up the right shoulder. The speed and quickness advantage that Layla enjoyed, I think, has been neutralized. Layla is not moving at full speed anymore, and you can attribute 100% of that to uh, the damage done both by Violet in the ring. And by that dive on the outside, suplex hook of the leg for two. Tell us more. And even on her back, Layla is fighting. She is swinging. Oh, got the foot up. And a body scissors takeover, interestingly done. Many athletes would go for the head, but I like that Violet grabbed onto the entire body, which not only would give her a bit more leverage with the part of the body she's focusing on, but certainly would wrench the back further of Layla if that's where Violet's targeting her offense. Nicely done. Wait a minute, roll through here by Layla looking to end this thing. If I'm Layla, I'm looking for the Hail Mary. I'm trying to end this thing as quickly as possible. Knowing the damage done to the back, and you see these, these wild swings and the pump kick. Lay on a German suplex nicely done. Violet is down, Violet is hurt. And this gives Layla the reprieve that she's been looking for. Can she get herself back into the game? Crowd is jacked. They can't wait to see what happens next. Action like you'll only see on WWE Violet. Elevate Layla high angle back suplex. Right in the back of the neck. Is that enough? Whoa. Layla up at one and on her feet. Expect to see oh charmingly suplex. Come on, bitch. I think Layla just found a second gear. And Violet landed square on the back of her head and Layla charges through from the complete other side of the ring. Those deadly feet and knees coming into play. Yeah, Layla's feeling this. Violet had a uh, a great several minute stretch of this match. But you sense that Layla has uh, been able to gain back a lot of that lost momentum. Boot salt, nobody there. Just as I say that, Layla went high risk again. Once more, did not pay off. Violet trying to elevate Layla, who's still fighting. Looking to grab an appendage. But to the, I think Violet went to the eyes. Violet to the eyes and and that reverse power slam, Layla gets stacked up, and Layla's been defeated. Violet, uh, in her eyes, taking out the trash. She feels that she won this decisively. I would argue that point. The sweetest sin is your winner.
may be the first time that a cheesecake has been the manager of record for, well, anyone. But uh, this match will be colorful. It will be an orthodox, you got to believe. Gabby Gilbert, who is one of the most experienced and widely respected athletes we've showcased here on WEW. You should listen to this. You never know what they're going to say. Uh, but Gabby Gilbert is somebody who's been a wrestler, a trainer, uh, a mentor, a role model for many. She's uh, had many names, many incarnations as a... Uh, Dance about it and tickle oh, each other. No, 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 Why not? No, 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 no. It's wrestling. Oh, serious. A lot of times, uh, the oh, method you will serious. go to to get in the head of your opponent and psych serious. them out, a bit unorthodox. But uh, the what was attempted to be a test of strength turned into uh, some interpretive yeah. dance. We'll see if we get the test of strength this time. But Gilbert's serious. worn many hats, had many names, and uh, I think she's so likable. Oh, not ballroom dancing, folks. Ballroom dancing in your professional wrestling. It's like cheesecake in your professional wrestling. You didn't know you needed it until you saw it. And you won't win a match this way, but uh, these are two free personalities. Having a good time inside Cradle by Gilbert. You knew it was only a matter of time before one attempted to outsmart the Seriously, other. Seriously, that was a lot of fun. Dude, that was so much fun. I was like totally I to punch someone. <laughs> Are you counting me? Gabby with some words of I'm encouragement of sorts. Corn oh. mink, maybe reciprocates. I'm always prepared for a sub-war. Oh. Uh, what's going on? Is Gabby challenging Corn Mink to a uh, thumb wrestling match? One, two, three, four, I That's exactly what's happening. Because of course it is. And Corn Mink is coming out very aggressively. Well, you don't know what the best stance to have in a thumb wrestling match is, as they've thumb wrestled their way out of the ring. This could be the first thumb wrestling match to end the double count out. <laughs> well, whoever has an opposable thumb may have the advantage. I'm not really sure. I haven't discussed a lot of strategy in thumb wrestling in uh, my years in the profession. I feel like Corn Mink was on the offensive until just now. As we have thumb wrestled back into the ring. I think Cor Corrin rolled one too many times and she's a little off kilter from her opponent. And Gabby using that to her advantage. And Gabby picks up the victory by pinning the thumb of Corrin Mink to uh, the proverbial canvas. Okay. Not a win in this matchup, just a win in their own personal competition. We play rock, paper, scissors. As far as I know, you still got to pin the shoulders in this one. Imagine being in the locker room with one of these girls before the match and going over strategy sessions with them. Rock, paper, scissors. Everyone picks rock. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! They're really digging rock. I don't know what exactly we're playing for here as far as what uh, the winner will gain, but... Corrin just papered herself right into an arm drag. Is that what you want? Gabby Gilbert is in shock, aghast, flummoxed that her rock strategy was outsmarted. And she needs a break. Oh, 
my, what a, what a pair to draw to. I could not imagine being on a long road trip with one or both of these athletes. I couldn't imagine uh, talking strategy with them, going out to lunch with them. I'm asking how their day is, they're probably a challenge. Duck on the clothesline. Corrin able to settle on the side headlock and looking like trying to elevate Gabby over the top rope. I could end this match in a hurry. Gabby able to counter. What a uh, most auspicious and eclectic way to cap things off here at WEW, this particular installment. Gabby looking for a hip lock. Corin counters, but Gabby counters the counter, and on we go. Both athletes looking for the leverage, and it's finally Corin Mink sent to the outside, and she hangs on, she hangs on, she hangs on. Got tickled into letting go. So apparently this was an over-the-top rope challenge in their kind of uh, makeshift competitions within this matchup. I think that puts Gabby ahead on competition. Two to one, maybe? Oh. And there was a, uh, a discus uppercut. Did Gabby dip into the cheesecake? I think she dipped into the cheesecake. I don't think it was the designated cheesecake time in this matchup. But it is time to connect with a hip attack. And Mink the worst for wear at this point. Gilbert. What is this? Is that a box of cereal? I don't know if I'm allowed to state the brand name. I won't unless my producer tells me to, but I can confirm that there are, are not only pieces of cereal, but I believe also marshmallows involved. And Gabby gets backdropped onto all that cereal that's gonna get stuck in her back. She's gonna need to pour milk on herself to make it soggy to clean it off. And here's Corin Mink. Looking for a slam. The Urinagi into the breakfast cereal and that's enough to put this thing away. You do not mess with a woman's cheesecake and live with Taliban. Corin Mink is your victor, and she gets the spoils. She enjoys some of that cereal. She'll enjoy her manager cheesecake, and I'll enjoy thanking each and every one of you for being a part of the Foodie Ambush for WEW. My name is Joe Dabrowski. This has been an incredible hour of unique action as only presented by us here at WEW. Stay posted. We're coming right back your way real soon. We'll see you next time.